All right, uh, Vedant, an another uh, you know, a news that has emerged around this entire case has been these WhatsApp chats uh, that Shraddha had with acquaintances of her, where she actually talks about the abuse that she faced. Uh, she even, it's, it, and these chats are from 2020. Uh, she talks about how she's unable to go to work uh, because, uh, it, it, because she'd gotten beaten the night before, uh, having low blood pressure because of it, of speaking to Aftab's parents and that she wanted Aftab to move out. Absolutely. Now, these chats are from November 2020. That is nearly two years before the murder actually took place in 2022. Now, these chats are extremely revealing of the kind of helplessness, the kind of predicament that uh, Shraddha, in fact, had to go through. And I mean, just if we can just pause and show you, uh, she says that she won't be able to make it today because of the beating yesterday and that she fe she's feeling low on energy and that low on BP. Now, this is uh, a chat, uh, a screenshot of the chats between Shraddha and her manager. So, in fact, in one of these screenshots, she also sends across a picture of hers to show how uh, pathetic a situation is and why she actually won't be able to make it to work. Now, there are other uh, chats as well that have come out. Remember, her friends trying to console her, trying to tell her that she is not alone, that all of them are there with her. Remember, her friends have really played a very important role as far as this case is concerned. They are constantly in touch with the Mumbai police. Uh, they have gone on record to, to say that Shraddha was in an, ab in an abusive relationship. If you can go to the next chat now, where she also, you know, in fact, talks about... Okay, here. Uh, so, this is a conversation... Uh, with her, uh, one with one of her friends, uh, they they say that you know we are all there with you. And if you can just scroll up to show you that she's also sent a, sent across this picture of uh, hers to to show that you know she has been beaten up and that she is in fact in an abusive relationship. Two more important things that have come out uh, from these chats. One, of course, is the fact that she says that she still has more. Uh, she still has to visit the police. The fact that she was in touch with the police, uh, though uh, you know a formal FIR was not lodged, but the fact that she was in touch with the police says a lot about the kind of relationship that she was in fact trapped in. The other uh, important thing that has come out of one of these uh, screenshots is that she also wanted to visit the women's commission, the Mahila Mandal people. So in fact, she was re she was reaching out. She reached out to her friends. She reached out to the police. She was also trying to reach out to Mahila Mandal, perhaps, uh, you know, activists uh, and uh, such people. So, you know, she was really trying to uh, sort of get rid of the relationship. And that is what is evident. In one of these chats, uh, she also says that everything is going to be sorted out if he finally moves out. So that really shows the kind of helplessness that, uh, you know, she that she was facing and the kind of abusive relationship that she had to bear the brunt of. Remember, the, the chats have surfaced on the day when a doctor has also gone on record to say that he treated her back in 2020 when she complained of back pain, severe neck pain. In fact, also, you know, the doctor said that all these are signs of some kind of, you know, a physical fight or some kind of beating. So, you know, these and this horrific picture that you can see on screen of these bruises, so and eyes, cuts on her cheeks. So all this really revealing that it was not just one fight that escalated into something uh, as grave as, you know, her murder, but in fact, it was a two-year-long abusive relationship, perhaps, that she was in.